Welcome to the Dandruff Show, and today we will be building computers. Well, not actually building computers, but if you if you plan on upgrading or building a computer soon, you want ideas on how to upgrade, or you want to give your loved ones suggestions on what to get you for the holiday season, this would be great for that. I'll be showing you three machines that me and my team of people have come up with that will be the best gaming experience for your dollar, as well as just have an overall very snappy machine that's great for everyday use. Every machine has an SSD and at least one terabyte of storage behind it. I'll Operating systems were not included in the list, but if you like, there's a link in the description down below if you want to pick up Windows 8.1 for just $20 from a reputable source, or there's also other free alternatives like Linux. Other peripherals like monitor, keyboard, mouse, etc. have also not been included, and the three price points are $500, $1,000, and $1,500, all in U.S. For a $500 machine, an AMD Athlon X4 860K, which is a quad-core CPU at 3.7 GHz on the Steamroller architecture. It's a little bit older, but for just under $70, it's the cheapest quad-core that's over 3 GHz that will play any game. An MSI GTX 950 with a core speed of 1127 MHz and a boost speed of 1317 with 2 GB of GDDR5 RAM clocked in at 6650 MHz on a 128-bit bus this is the best card for playing indie games like don't starve terraria and papers please older games older AAA titles that is like borderlands 2 skyrim and fallout new vegas or new, new current today's moba like league of legends dota heroes of the storm or smite all at 1080p 60 fps on at least medium settings msi a68hi itx motherboard with 8 gigabytes of ddr3 ram i don't remember which ram sorry a Kingston SSD Now V3 240 gig solid state drive. I personally own the 120 gig version of this hard drive, and it, it's wonderful. It's super duper fast, boots in about five seconds. A one terabyte Hitachi DeskStar three and a half inch 7200 RPM hard drive, all powered by an EVGA 430 watt power supply, which again I personally own. It has all the connectors and wattage you need to power everything listed here. Finally, it's all contained within a Corsair Spec 01 in red, which is a mid-tower and will give you room to grow in the future. Also, because you may be still playing games from physical media, a DVD and CD writer from Samsung was also included. The total comes to $498, cutting it really close after mail-in rebates. Next up, we have the Pretty Boy. I went with a black and white theme just because I could without costing it a significant amount extra. An AMD FX 8350 8 core processor was chosen because I own one, which is also on the pile driver architecture and runs at a whopping 4 gigahertz and turbos to 4.2. Then a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo to cool that bad boy down, a machine this nice deserves aftermarket cooling. For the GPU, I was able to cram an EVGA GTX 980 super clocked into the budget, which has 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 clocked in at 7,010 megahertz on a 256 bus, and a two, at a GM 204 core running at 1266 megahertz and boosts to 1367 it's the same card i use and it's great for playing practically any game on the highest settings at 1080p 60 fps or higher except some modern AAA titles where it'll dip down to maybe 45 depending on the game of course a beautiful black and white msi sli crate edition motherboard and eight gigabytes of kingston hyperx fury ram also with a white heatsink they look great together the same drives featured in the last build being the Kingston V300 SSD 240 gig and the Hitachi 1 terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive are just fine. I really did not feel like those needed to be upgraded. All powered by an EVGA power supply. The processor and GPA or GPU though are going to need a little bit extra juice. So a 650 watt supernova, again, another part that I personally own. And what's great about this power supply is it should come with its own bag, its own bag for the cables, Velcro zip ties, and it's fully modular. I love EVGA. To finish it all off, an NZXT Source 210 Elite case, again, in white, ah, looks great. This baby will bring both beauty and brawn to the battlefield. Or, or land party, whatever you call it. 
All right, this is the fun one. My first Skylake build. And I'd like to recommend this one to Emma and Dama, who both play on my Minecraft server. This one's for you guys. First of all, the processor's an Intel i5-6400 quad-core on Intel's newest Skylake architecture, sporting a very nice 2.7 gigahertz. And while it may not sound as nice as the last 4 gigahertz one, this is all running on 65 watts. That is an incredibly amount efficient power draw. That under while not under load, it will be practically taking nothing from the wall. And when it is under full load, only 65 watts. All-in-one liquid cooling, also known as AIO, was the only option for this CPU. Even though it does come with a stock heat sink, it would be much nicer with a Corsair H60 120mm radiator. And while I don't own this, I do own the Vigor H100i. It's very elegant, very stylish, and also very quiet. The best gaming graphics card on the market, the EVGA GTX 980 Ti, with its 6GB of GDDR5 at 7,010MHz on a 384-bit bus, a GM200 core, the same as the Titan X, clocked in at 1102MHz, boosting to 1190. The graphics, This graphics card will undoubtedly play any game, at its highest settings and will never see below 55 fps again depending upon the game you may even want to consider a higher than 60 hertz monitor in order to get more frames at 1080p or even moving up to 1440p this card is fully capable of doing it ryan the guy who actually does my intros he has two soon to be three and highly recommends them an asus h170 pro lga 1151 socket motherboard was also the pick along with 16 gigabytes of ddr4 crucial ballistics ram same ram i use a 500 uh, more power also means more storage so a 512 gig S uh, samsung 850 evo ssd another part that i personally own so does ryan it's the solid state drive that i recommend to anyone if they can afford it over other drives all of my sata drives are 850 evos and then i finally got my way on this one a two terabyte seagate sshd hybrid drive and that is the last part of part that i personally own and recommend to this build it's huge eight gigabyte cache rather than most hard drives with their 64 megabyte cache uh, it, it once you load data into it it is much much faster to recall that data meaning the second time that you load a program the loading time will be significantly reduced the same evga supernova 60 650 watt power supply is the work is the workhorse behind this i'm able to do it because of the low power draw on that i5 that is an amazing processor i love that one this is all nestled inside a sleek and very professional looking corsair 750d which has tons of space for all of your drives and your radiator with plenty of cable management and also comes personally recommended by ryan So, in conclusion, I just want to add that no matter how hard I tried, I could not get an AMD GPU into any of these builds. I'm going to show you the one that I wanted anyway. I don't know who'll use it, but it goes by the name of the R7370. It's got 4 gigs of GDDR5 on a 256 bus at 5,600 megahertz and a clock speed of 995. It goes for about 150 bucks. I absolutely love it. Well, that was a ton of fun, and I hope that helps somebody out there with picking new PC parts for the holiday season. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.